Mike Verico. Are we ready? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
like a master seed he can say to this mountain move from here to there and it will be moved because nothing is impossible with God amen so whatever mountains of problems whatever trials whatever situation you are going through right now 
let us believe and have faith that nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Because our God is great and greater is He that's living in us than who is in the world. Amen. Do we believe on that church? Do we believe on that church? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us declare the greatness of our God in our lives. Let us proclaim that God is great and nothing is impossible with Him. I don't know your situation, but I believe that God knows you personally. He knows your heart. He knows your problem. He knows what you are going through right now. Surrender it to God and declare that God is great. He is great in your life. He is greater than any problems. He is greater than any situation. And let's continue to trust Him with all our hearts. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. As we sing this song, let us offer our hearts to God. Let us open our hearts to God. And let us surrender everything to Him.
offering of praise. He deserves it. Name above all names, worthy to be praised. How great, how great are you, Lord. How great is our Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. We just want to thank you, Lord God. Give us a heart, oh Lord Jesus, of humbleness and gratitude, oh Lord God. As we come before you in your throne room, oh Lord God, on our knees, oh Lord Jesus, in total adoration, oh Lord God, total exaltation, oh Lord Jesus, in reverence to your glory, oh Lord God. Hallelujah. We pray for your people here today and those who are still here to come, oh Lord God, and those who aren't able to make it, oh Lord Jesus. Lord God, may your spirit, oh Lord God, may your presence, oh Lord Jesus, be upon each and every one of them, each and every one of us, oh Lord God. Your presence, your spirit, oh Lord God, infiltrate this room, oh Lord God. Saturate every corner, every room, every crevice, oh Lord God, that is in this place, oh Lord God, with your presence, oh Lord Jesus. Lord God, we just want to ask for your service today, oh Lord God. Be in the center of this service, guide this service, O oh Lord God, and be with your speaker today, O oh Lord God. Hide them behind your cross, O oh Lord Jesus. May every word be said, be God breath, O oh Lord God, in your love letter to us, O oh Lord Jesus. Give us the ears to hear and the heart open and ready to accept your word, O oh Lord God. If you see anything, O oh Lord God, in us or in this place that is displeasing, any inequities, O oh Lord God, may you cleanse us, wash us clean, O oh Lord God. Give us a pure heart, oh Lord Jesus. And we just pray that throughout this service, may we continue to be blessed so we can be blessed to be a blessing, oh Lord God. Lord God, we just want to give you back all the praise, all the glory and honor. In your name we pray. The people of God say, Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. church good afternoon yes just a reminder our majestic kids are all the way in the back if you can follow at the CJ she's raising her hand right now and she will bring all your kids to the majestic kids room amen amen how are we church are we good how amazing was that praise and worship I'm so blessed and I hope that you will be blessed today. It's such a beautiful day. Spring is almost here. And, um, you know, we just can't wait for what else God is going to do. Amen. But, of course, we're coming into our communion for today. So um, can you remind your neighbor and say, it's communion today. It's communion. it's communion today. And, you know, one of the things that I would like to remind you all about communion, it's that... Jesus was broken for us so we can be fixed by him. And you know, celebrating communion marks the story of Jesus, amen. And he gave himself completely to give us nothing better but a better life, amen. And you know, it is, it's also to start, you know, new, to start fresh. And um, it's also to have a relationship with God. And I hope um, you can grab whatever I'm about to say to you in today's communion. So it says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, it says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put uh, to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Can you say that? Made alive in the spirit. We are to be made alive in the spirit. Amen. And you know, communion, it's not about the ritual that we do this monthly. Um, or to respect or to admire Jesus Christ, but it's, it's, it's a person that we want to worship, amen. It's a person that we want to give thanks to. And you know, it's also, communion is a symbolic gesture to remember him. So as it says, do this in remembrance of me. You know, that's such a famous um, communion verse. So um, our wonderful ushering team is going to be passing you uh, the items, which is a piece of bread, um, and juice as well. So when we break the bread, know that the body of Christ was broken so that we can be made whole. Amen. And this is what he did to his disciples. 
And so it is also so that he can fix us, us, the imperfect people. But he loves us so much that he broke his body for us so that we may live. And you know, when we drink the juice, know that it is his body that was spilled. So his precious blood was spilled for us, amen. And so in all of that, so that we may live, to retell the story, to remember Christ and all of his doings, the sacrifice that he made, so that we can be here to worship him, amen. So if we can all hold up our items, I want you to take the time to remember him, to remember your savior, to remember Jesus Christ. You know, this is so important as we eat the bread and take the juice, you can do it in your own time. But um, when we do that, I would just like to pray for everyone that is here for our communion today. So hallelujah, Lord God, we thank you so much for your cross. We thank you so much, oh Lord, for your salvation. We thank you for, for all the sacrifices that you have made, even when we are impatient, even though we are imperfect people. God, you see us as perfect because you made us perfect in your eyes. And Father, in your perfect love, I pray that we will be able to sacrifice, um, that we'll be able to give up an offering to you, whatever that may be. But do this in remembrance of you, Father. I pray, oh God, that you will um, be able to remind your children, your lovely children that are here, oh God, the, the, the generous sacrifice of the love that she spilled on that cross Father, we thank you for your covenant. We thank you for um, the cross of Calvary, Father. We thank you, O Lord Jesus, that you spared your blood. You broke your body. Your hands were nailed to the cross for us so that we may live. And Father, even though we are human, even though we keep on sinning, Father, you still love us, O God. So Father, I pray that you show us your purpose to us, O God, so we can remember you. Hallelujah. So we thank you. We honor you. And Father in heaven, we give you back all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody will say amen. 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 So you can take the piece of bread and the juice. Amen and amen. Okay. So going on with our service, we have our tithes and offering. And it's going to be brought by none other than Brother Rowan. Can we give it up for Brother Rowan? God is good, God is good. <coughs> um, I, will, I would like to share the today, for, uh, today is, uh, what time is uh, today? It's giving time. Yeah, <laughs> it's giving time. Yeah. Hallelujah, I uh, just want to pray. Lord, thank you Lord for today, oh Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, I pray, oh Lord, guide us, oh Lord, in this very day, oh Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Let your word, oh Lord, be our word, oh Lord. Lord, I pray, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord. Touch everyone, O oh Lord, and con convict, O oh Lord, each and every one, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. To hear your word, O oh Lord. Upon hearing of, of your word, O oh Lord, let there be, O oh Lord, hallelujah, Lord, uh, a desire, O oh Lord, to, to give, O oh Lord, hallelujah, Lord, not only their resources, O oh Lord, but also their time, O oh Lord, unto you, O oh Lord. Lord, to you all the glory and praises, O oh Lord, in his name. Amen. Amen. Um, I would like to share... Uh, uh, four points today. It's uh, about giving and tithing. What God is doing to His servant in giving and tithing. Uh, first, I would like to read this this uh, point in the passage itself. It's God touched the heart of a servant. He touched the heart of a servant in Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 10. I will just read it. You shall give to him freely in your heart. He says, in your heart. Shall not be grudging when you give to him. Because for, for this the Lord your God will bless you in all your works and in all, in all that you undertake. See? He touched the heart of a giver that you will give at your own will without coercion or forcing you to give. Right? That's our God. He don't, he don't push you. You give, you give. Because He don't need the resources that, that, that you have. Because the resources that you have, He is the one who will provide it. 
God is good. And secondly, um, second point is, God provide the key of a bountiful and over, overflowing life. It says on a two, two verse, uh, two Bible verse here in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10. It says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of all of, all of your crop, then your barn will be filled to overflowing. See? The overflowing. And your pots will brim over the new wine. See? If you honor the Lord, uh, if you honor the Lord with your first fruit, what is the first fruit? Before the first fruit was your, excuse me, your uh, rice in the rice field, your cattle, but nowadays, uh, you cannot bring a a cattle here or a cow or a buffalo here. You cannot bring a buffalo here nowadays. But you can bring what is your first fruit? Your salary. Yeah? Your salary and other resources that you have. Your time. Your precious time. Right? To serve the Lord. And on second, ber- second book of uh, second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6, it says whoever sow bountifully will also reap bountifully. See? Bountifully, uh, like overflowing and bountifully, you will be blessed by the Lord. And third point is <clears throat> what God is doing in giving and tithing. He resists the proud and boastful life. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, in New Living Translation, teach those who are rich in, the, in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money which is so unre- unreliable, theirs, their trust should be in the God who richly give us all we need for our enjoyment. God is good. You cannot, you cannot trust your, yourself to your bank account. I have a billion dollars in my bank account. I will ask you when you're lying in your, in your bed and the debt is calling you. Let me know if your resources is much more uh, reliable. And let me know if you can say that I have billion dollars on my bank account. It is nothing, nothing at all. Because you will say, I want to have good health. I want my family beside with me. God is good. And, and on Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, he says here that, Remember the Lord your God, for this it is He who gives you ability to produce wealth. It is not our strength nor our power to, oh, I have lots of uh, money, I have my salary, $200 per hour. Yeah? Uh, it's, it's not our own power and ability. It is because of the mercy of the Lord that we have this kind of skills, skill set, and other resources that we have. It's not by own our power. It is by the Mercy of the Lord. And last point is, God showed the difference between a giver and a stingy. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24, one person gives freely, yet gain even more. See? He gives freely. A person gives freely, even though sometimes uh, that person is having nothing. But another withhold unduly, but comes to poverty. You see, if you keep holding your resources and you're not sharing and be part of the the the, the movement of uh, sharing of gospel in all nations, for sure, it's not me who will convict you. It is the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Lord, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Today, O oh Lord, thank you, Lord, for a simple word, O oh Lord. And Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, it is not me, O oh Lord, who will convict each and every one, including me, myself, O oh Lord. I am not exempted, O oh Lord, but everybody, O oh Lord, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, Lord, uh, bless the, their life, O oh Lord, the way, O oh Lord, hallelujah, you desire, O oh Lord, and, and crafted, O oh Lord, hallelujah, each life, O oh Lord, uh, hallelujah, Lord, for your own purpose, O oh Lord, to serve you, O oh Lord, and be bountiful, and enjoy life, O oh Lord, to the fullest, O oh Lord, hallelujah, Lord, that you are in the center, in the midst of us, O oh Lord. Lord, we honor you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. I just want to introduce our, the person who will share our word. 
our beloved Pastor Bong. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we give a hand clap to the Lord? Wow. It's like a it's like a movie theater. There's a balcony. Uh, no, orchestra and balcony. There's a ba the balcony at the back. Hello, everybody at the back. Yes. Hey. Praise God. Praise God. Say to the one next to you. Say to the one next to you. Hello. 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 Come on. Hello. Hello. Ah, hello. Hello. Ah. Say to the one next to you. You look good today. Yep. I hope you had a shower today. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Join me in a, in a prayer. Lord, we thank you. We honor you, O oh God. We give you praise. We hold on to your word, your promised word, that your angels are charging over us. They're here, O oh Lord, protecting us. They're here, O oh God, taking care of us. And I thank you for today, O oh God, for your grace and just the, uh, uh, the ability for us to come together in, together as a church to worship you in spirit and in truth. May our time of adoring you a few minutes ago was pleasing to you, O oh God. It's true to your word. You're true to your word. If your people cannot worship you, you will instruct the trees, the rocks, to adore you and say praises to your name. So today, O oh God, we as your people, O oh Lord, hallelujah, knows that word, the promised word, O oh God, that you are seeking for the true worshipers that will worship you in spirit and in truth. For you are a God of spirit. You are a God of truth. I thank you for your word today. I thank you for the hearts of your people. I thank you for this house. I give you the praise. Let's all adore the Lord. Come on. I give you praise. I give you glory. To you all the highest glory, God. I give you the glory, oh God. Take any glory from us, oh God. Not from us, but to you alone. To you alone. I give all the praise. In Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we give a hand clap to the Lord for the lives of these people? Come on. Huh? Can we give a hand clap to the Lord for the lives of these people? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Praise God. I was reminded when Joshua, Joshua was a military general. And then they have to conquer Jericho. The Bible scholar says the walls of Jericho are like two chariots traveling side by side. So really the walls are so thick. But what God's people's strategic plan to conquer Jericho. And we know for the seventh day the wall collapsed. What was that? The army of God's people, hallelujah, knew how to worship God. Can I hear yes to that? Amen? Amen? Yes, 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 Jessica. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yes. I know, I know. Yes. I got it. I have it. I have it, Jessica. What happened? Yes. Praise God. Last Wednesday, I went out. Uh, at the Yarra River and from time to time I go there even before pandemic happens and it's for free by the way just to let you know along Alexandria Avenue in front of Rod Laver and you got the botanical there and it was a time for me to have a ref reflection in my life at the same time is for me to adore the Lord and be thankful to God to be grateful to God and God reminded me, he says, Bong, always remember, I always calm the storms, and other times, I'll calm the child. You get that? 
There are times in our lives God calms the storms. But most of the time, He calms His child. Amen. So, yeah. Jessica, is you there? Sometimes He calms the child. <laughs> All right. He gave me a thumbs up. So we welcome to church today, Kesha. Uh, Akinde, right? Did I say it right? Yes. Yes. Uh, she attends and she goes to JIL Brisbane. So welcome. Welcome today. And 21 years old, right? Happy birthday this week. Yeah? Happy birthday. Can we all say it together? Happy birthday, Keisha. Yes, praise God. Uh, as you know, last two weekends ago, yeah, three weekends ago, we went, we went to Queensland and visited them and saw the church and ministered to the ministry at JIL, Jesus is Lord Church, Queensland. And to God be the glory, they have uh, uh, two outreaches, south and north of uh, Queensland. So if, you're, if you guys are there, visit the church. It's in north, uh, somewhere in the north. And south is Rochdale. That's the only thing I remember. So praise God. You're still here? So it's true, right? God counts the storms. How many of you had storms in your life? Only Pastor Bong, right? Too many to count. How many of you have storms in your life? One, two. Wow, you guys, man. You guys are good. Tell me what water you're drinking. You haven't had storms? Wow. I have so many storms in my life. That was my reflection on that very, very Wednesday because on my Facebook feed on memories, I saw the time I went to Papua New Guinea for the first year anniversary, that weekend, 2017. And I know perfectly well what was that weekend is. And I know that year, and I know the year before that. That's why I went... On that day, I said, God, you're good, and you're good all the time. How many of you go to that place? Sometimes after the storm, you go, wow, man, he, he helped me. How did I recover? How did I do that? How did he do that for me? And you're here already, doing well. How many of you? Any reflection? Any, anyone can relate? I went to that place. Because I saw the memories and it reminded me of all those photos and I know the feeling, I know what's in my heart, I know the tribulation, I know the storms and I know the time that I am so uncomfortable, I feel like quitting, I want to go. That's it, that's it, that's it. Wow. So God reminded me, He calms the storms and He calms the child. You know, after that, that Wednesday, I was thanking God. I said, God, with all that overwhelming feeling and emotions, man, you have taken care of my lips. I did not say any cursing to you or to people. You have, you have taken care of my behavior, my attitude. So I'm falling and stumbling, God. But somehow you calm your child. He's got a way of doing things. Because I've seen people, man, they go to the edge and they go, but he did that to me how many of you can relate to that I love the last part because he calms his child there's a calming things about God when there was a commotion do you know that when you go to the other side of things in life because the disciples with Jesus Christ they have to cross over how many of you are crossing over at this moment in time some of you are crossing over to a job. Some of you are crossing over to a relationship. Some of you are making a, 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 a big decision in your life and you have to cross over. Hey, I can't, I can't stay here for long. I have to go. And when they cross over, there was a storm. Remember that story? The, all the four Gospels told that story. There was a storm, right? And these people with Jesus Christ who were sleeping in the stern, the Bible says, fast asleep, snoozing like a baby. The Bible says, and they're all disciples who are fishermen. They know the waters. They're, that's their business. But somehow when the storm happens, they what? Panic, man. That's the nature of the man, right? 
When, the, when your back is on the wall, you are not cool as cucumber. You panic. What am I going to do? Right? Because they have to cross over to the other side. How many of you God made a way when you cross over? Anybody? You cross over. Any crossovers here in this place? Right? Melbourne people, are you crossover kind of people? I mean, you are going to the next level of our Christian journey as a group. And it has to be a next level of thinking. A next level of giving. Maybe some of you are, are still uh, new. Right? What's that? Okay. Say to the one next to you, my neighbor, hopefully next year we will have the place. <laughs> so those people who are giving, give more, right? Yeah? Oh, one go, one go. Yeah. One's gone. I'm, do I supposed to put my hand up? All right. Also today, I would like to welcome Mary Ann. Mary Ann Kingsley. She attends our Narrow Warren Bible study. Praise God. Right? So if you're going to cross over to the other side, trust God all the way. He calms the storm and He calms His child. He's going, Bong, chill ka lang. Cool kalang pong. Wag ka masyadong ma-overwhelm. Just don't get excited too much. Just be calm. Do the Miyagi kind of thing. Do it with me. Come on. Yes. Nice. Nice. I like that. Praise God. Last Sunday, we said something like that. If there's a problem in my life, it's my own doing. <laughs> right? Last few Sundays, right? We went, finger, point here. We stopped pointing like, because of you, kasi ikaw eh. Kaya ako nagkaganito. The victim mentality. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, there's no more time. So all out tayo ngayon. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Is the heater on or the aircon is on? Aircon is on, man. Aircon is on. Say to the one next to you, revival. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know why I'm shaking, but uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Speak to your people. The text for today, Matthew chapter 10, verse 21 to 33. The title for today's message is, Is it? It is worth it. It is worth it. All difficulties. In following Christ. How many of you are followers of Christ? Raise your hands. Followers of Christ. Not followers of Jesus' Lord Church. Followers of Christ. Followers of Christ. Disciples of Christ. Right? Disciples of Christ are disciplined, sir. Disciples of Christ. Matthew 10, 21, 33. Brother started with the NIV version, New International Version. Brother will betray brothers, brother to death. Wow. That alone speaks to you that some of your family members will, will persecute you. Right? Yes? Make a po ba ako? Yes? Right there in front of us. They just, a father, his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. Last Sunday, we talked about, wow, sometimes I see kids directing their parents. From now on, I'm the parent. You're the child. Dad? <laughs> I said, wow, there's something wrong with the house. Right, sir? It, it just def defaults Ephesians chapter 5, the order of the house. And then they, we see this. Children rebelling. You will be hated by everyone because of me, God says. But the one who stands firm, underline that word, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. You're saved by grace. You're going to heaven with me, but you don't abuse grace. 
You don't abuse grace. Because you quote to me, 1 John chapter 1, verse 19, right? He's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all our righteousness. So what that happens, we abuse grace. We keep sinning and sinning and sinning, not seeing ourselves. Oh man, boom, come on. You have to change. You said your New Year's resolution. Do something about it. Praise the Lord. Truly I tell you, you will not finish going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Second point, the student is not above the teacher. So God is saying, heaven is higher than earth. The student is not above the teacher nor a servant above his master. It is enough for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebul, how much more the members of his household? So do not afraid, the third point. So do not afraid, say to the one next to you, don't panic. God is in control. Do not be afraid of them. For there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in, in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. He was saying, do not be afraid of Satan, the devil, the one that we talked about last week that's continuously waging war of you. So you as a Christian should not just walk like a picnic in the park because he's waging a war. He's waging a war, man. He wants to destroy your marriage. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to destroy your kids. What's John 10.10 said, sir? He is here to kill to steal, there's no such thing as, can I just pinch you? He's here to kill, to steal, and destroy. So he's the one that speaks of this. He says, look for him, check him out, but Lord is, is on the upper hand. But he says, do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Right? Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Right? Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet none one of them will fall to the ground inside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worse than many sparrows. God is in control he loves you and me and he knows what's happening and he is directing you and me and he's from time to time he taps you and me and say i'll take care of the storm just chill bong i'll take care and i will calm the child as well amen praise god hallelujah so three things I just want to share to you today. The first one is, say to the one next to you, stand your ground. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. It's given already. You will be hated by everyone because of me. That's why those people who are just mucking around in their Christian journey, right? Hallelujah. They can easily be not persecuted because they're not doing anything for God. But God says, you want to proclaim my name? You want to live my name with no compromise in your marriage, in your life? You will be persecuted. You want to have an easy peasy kind of Christian walk, right? Hallelujah. You're, you're good on Sunday, but uh, Monday to Saturday, you live like the worldly people as they live. Hallelujah. Man. That's a compromise kind of life. Anybody? He said, you need to take a stand. Right? Anyone? You need to take a stand. Father in the house, you need to take a stand. If there's a time that you need to speak to your children, speak to your children about the ways and the works of God. Wag lang po natin pababayaan lang. Like, yes. Hallelujah. Stand your ground. 
You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Stand your guard regardless of the opposition. Remember David and Goliath's story? How many of you know that story? Is David here? At the back, yes. He was fighting Goliath, right? And he was taking, I, I believe it's, it's in 1 Samuel 22, that story. Correct me, guys. Help me. He's fighting Goliath. And then the brother who he was told to take uh, snacks for his brothers. And the brother, the older brothers, right? Three older brothers were there. The soldier of King Saul says to him, Okay, thank you for the lunch box. Thanks, thank you for the lunch. Thank you for the food. And now he can go, 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 go. But he was hearing Goliath taunting the God of Israel. Remember that. For 40 days, 40 nights, the God of Israel is controlling their lives with taunt. Sometimes when we allow the taunt of this world about our God, even our lives, man, there's no more convictions in our life. Isn't it? Is that true? Amen? Right? We live like them. But the Word of God says, Somehow there's, we're set apart. Right? We don't, remember that's, I mentioned something about that setting apart. It's like, oh no, we're not better than you because we know God. No, that's not the word of setting apart. There has to be a setting apart that they will see. Remember that in Matthew, you're the light and salt of the earth. The light can never be hidden. Even it will be seen on the top of the hills. That's why when a, a Christian man goes to work, the light beams so bright and people go, man, there's something about you. Your testimony is evident in your family. That's why the greatest evangelism, sir, is your testimony. And I hear yes. The greatest evangelism, the greatest witnessing is your life testimony. They will say, ah, oh, I know that guy before. Man, you should see his life. You should see the changed in his life. Dad, man, you changed for good. Isn't that good for, for, a, for a child to hear that from a, a father to hear that from a child? Dads, right? Praise God. Because why am I saying this? Goliath was taunting the people of God. And David says, man... I know my, my dad just told me to bring Baon to my brothers, but I can't handle this. And all his brothers, all their brothers, right? So-called people that knows God were hiding. Can you imagine the world will taunt you and tell you, you know what? Everything that you know that's good, it's bad. Everything that's bad, it's good. And then you start to compromise and you follow everything that's bad. Because the world is walking that way. It was, it, it was like that. And remember the word that David heard that? And he goes, and the brother says, no, no, no. Sitatai, dad just told you to bring the bond. And shoo, 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 shoo. You're showing off. What did he say? What did he say? He says, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause for a Christian mom at home to influence the family for God? Right? Sometimes we pray, Lord, we want our family to be godly. But God says, Anak, hindi ka naman nag-action eh. <laughs> There's no action. Pray, pray, pray. But come on, man. Your, your kid's telling you to go to church, but ah, too busy. Is there not a cause? And we know after that, he stood with this Goliath, grown man. The Bible says, the weight of, uh, of the Sibat is heavier than Goliath, but he fought. King Saul was looking at the narrative and said, man, you can't fight this, come on. He, the, guy, the guy was taunting him, said, oh man, are you bringing me a dog so that so that's, I'm going to have to throw a stick? The king says, oh man, we're so, we're afraid for this Goliath thing. We have to put a face on this. Put him all the armor, they're so heavy. You know that story, right? Put the armor. But David says, what did David says? Too heavy. 
Why is that? Another, another take to that. When God gives you anointing, it's a different anointing to you and to me. God anoints, ladies and gentlemen, but every anointing is different. That's why that eliminates the comparison. I want her. I like to copy that. Much is given, much is required. David says, is there not a cause? And then that we know, right? We, we hear stories about he's so good about picking up stones. Because that's the skill of David. That's the only thing he fought Goliath. Right? And he flew. But he took a stand. Why did David warn? He stood on the covenant of God. I will fight for you. He goes, I will fight for you. 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 I, I, I message all my family in the fam chat, and some of them, 90% are here, right? I think complete. I said, uh, 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 my, our deepest prayer is for our great, for our grandchildren and great-grandchildren to love the Lord and to please God. So that prayer of mine <laughs> Some are smiling at the back. That prayer of mine, Lolo one day, Lolo one day will take a chance and will take a stand because I know there is a cause. Are you there? I will fight for you. He says, David says, I will fight for you. I will fight for you. And then he says, the second one, he was committed when you want to fight for something that you want to die for, you're committed. You're not half, half, half baked, you know. Oh, it's good. I'm there. I'm not, it's not good anymore. Oh, I don't, I don't want to be there. Wow, man. Whether it's good or not, you're committed. Say to the one next to you, are you committed? Are you committed? Yes, he was committed. He was committed, right? His convictions is pure. He's committed. God saw that commitment. Job said, when he tested me, my hope is pure. Daniel, right? In the lion's den, hold the mouth of the lion. Wow. Why is that? Daniel knew his God. He's committed, right? Praise God, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the burning fire furnace says to the leader, to the king, he says, if God never appeared and answer our prayers, it's still okay. Man, I read those three young boys, Christian boys, I'm going, grabe. Because sometimes myself, sometimes us, we love God because He's always delivering. He's giving all our perks. The boy says, King, even if we perish today, we still love our God. Hallelujah, right? Man, come on. I still love my God, either He gives or not. You know, we saw yesterday the leaders and, um, help me out, uh, the pastors training at... Uh, uh, Camp Praise Valley, and uh, I was just reminded because Brother Eddie was speaking at the back, uh, at the end part, and he's saying, oh, we should show this uh, uh, billboard uh, that says uh, Camp Leadership Training 1986. And then we have that picture because we went there when it's just cemented. There's no car park, just a cement, and they were just bulldozing everything. And now you see the seating filled, Huh? Can you imagine that army? We heard last few Sunday there is an army of God. That's what I just saw. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, that when the Holy Spirit came upon them and they were speaking in different tongues, the language of heaven, and God will use them. Wow. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we give a hand clap to the Lord? What did I see there? What did I see there? Because when we 
came there, we pledged to God in a prayer, a simple prayer, in that place we were there because Brother Eddie was just showing us that place and many, many places in Balintawak and in uh, even the, the property of uh, the late Elpidio, Crino's property that we have, the JIL family purchased already. And we were praying, me and Sister Anne, we were just saying, simple prayer, God, please, until the very, very end. May we serve you through this ministry. And today I was blessed because Pastor Joey posted with his wife 41 years. That's an achievement. To me, in my books, that's an achievement. Isn't it? Can we have that prayer until in the end? Did I be with us, Jos? Right? Lord, until the end, I'm still walking with you. Second one is, you stand your ground. Second one is, it says, follow the leader. Christ, the Redeemer, is the leader. We follow the leader. Maybe due to time, we can't show this. Praise God. It's okay. How many of you saw Saving Private Ryan? Raise your hands. Well, a couple of us, so you can relate to what I'm going to say. Remember the part that the medic died, right? The medic died. So many people, five to six people, gave their life for pri Private Ryan, right? They gave their life. Tom Hanks is the leader. And they, at the end when the medic died, right? There's a part that the medic died. There's a guy there by the name of uh, Corporal Russo, right? He's got a, 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 a helmet that says Brooklyn, New York, right? The guy there on the right. He was complaining. He says, man, come on. We made a mistake. We made a mistake. Why should we follow you? We are, we are all dead and we're still following you and we are dying for this guy that we don't even know. It makes sense, right? We don't know. And we saw the part that the medic died and the leader cried on the side. I love that part. I always love that part. Yes? So any leaders here can relate? <laughs> the warrior is the child. They just cry quietly on the side. He cried. Tom Hanks cried. After he cried, he wiped himself, and he's back again. But at the end, who was the one helping Tom Hanks? Anyone watching that? Tom Hanks was... That's okay, Vicky. Shooting the tank. And who was the one? Saving Private Ryan, the guy there at the last, on the right. On the last bit, they're the one that, that, that the two survive. And if you saw the movie, right, follow the leader. The most important thing, it was the end. Because Ryan was old already and he went to the cemetery and standing at the grave of Captain Miller, and then telling all that story that all these people, except Russo, died for me. I hope you don't miss this part. Because when we follow the leader, when I said much is given, much is required, he went to his wife and says, am I a good husband? Am I a good father? And then the wife says, yes, yes, what are you talking about? Yes, remember that? Yes, yes, you're a good husband. You're a good father. Because he goes, man, so many people gave their life for him. And then he has to have an accountability. We follow the leader, our, our Lord Jesus Christ, and he's telling us the assignment, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 19, to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. That will be a good question to ask to start. Am I doing it? Because we're following the leader. Am I bringing that to my family? Not the bigger scale, God. I can't do the bigger scale. But can, am I bringing that to my marriage? That's what it means to follow the leader. Amen. Amen. Because to those 
who follow the leader, they are committed. There's a commitment involved. Say to the one next to you, commitment. Joshua says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There's a commitment. Second, compromise will happen. I remember when Ruth Graham, the, 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 the wife of Billy Graham, how many of you heard of Billy Graham? The great, one of the greatest evangelists that ever lived. The wife was interviewed and says, oh, your son, which is Franklin Graham, oh, he's, he's, he's going mischief, oh, this and this and this. And he goes, what did the mom says? Sir, I raised him in the ways of God, principles of God. What is, what is she saying? I don't have any hold of his life anymore. But God is. And, but I raised him in the principles of God. And we, if, we, if we fast forward, where is Franklin Graham now? Taking care of Samaritan Purse. Taking care of the legacy of what his dad started. So to all the moms and dads, continue to teach our kids in the ways and works of God. And when they... When the birds start flying, man, we'll just hold on to God's promise. Teach your kids, teach your children in the ways of God. And when their backs is on the wall, they will remember God and they will not depart from it. As long as the foundation is there, my brothers and sisters, man, right? And then conflict. How many of you had conflict? <laughs> right? Because Satan is waging war all the time. We see it in the natural. I said to you last few Sundays, the war in Ukraine is still what? Happening. It's conflict. And the last bit is, say to the one next to you, do not be afraid. So God says, stand your ground. Stand your ground. And then he says, follow me all the way. Follow me all the way. And then the last bit, he says, do not be afraid. Don't panic. Panic not. He's calming the storms until now, Bong. He's calming the storms of your life, my life. But God is saying to me and to you, he's calming his child as well. Do not be overwhelmed. Because he is control. He is in control. How many of you believe that with all your heart? He is sovereign. He is in control of everything. When we say this, that we will have a place of worship one day, we don't just say it for the mere excitement of saying it. We know and we're declaring it because one day, aapak po tayo And we will say to one another, I told you so. Right? I told you so. Right? Sabi ko sa di ba? So I thank the Lord for these faithful people of God that sees that dream. Remember Martin Luther King Jr., the Capitol Hill? I have a dream. I have a dream that one day, hallelujah, people with color of yellow, brown, black, white, hallelujah, will be together in a playground, playing together, but they will not be measured by the color of their skin but by the contents of their character. I love that. But it started with a dream. Do not be afraid. He will, he will calm the storm. I like when God is calming you and I. What is the number one ingredient that happens to us? Because when he calmed the storm, what did he say to the storm? Be still. Peace. People of the Lord. When God is calming you and me, the very, very evident is here. In here is peace. It's peace. Right? Peace. Isn't it? Hallelujah. How do you know that God is in control? Right? I love what Brother Eddie says yesterday, and I will finish here in, in my conclusion. He says, when he was young in the Lord, baby Christian, he was given a Gideon Bible, and he, he loved Psalms 23. How many of you have read Psalms 23? I think it's the most 
i-google it, it's the most read scripture in the Bible. Psalms 23. We hear that all the time. It says, when he was young in the Lord, he was given a Gideon by his, wa his sister that shared the gospel to him and then he became a Christian. And he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. I shall not lack. He's young in the Lord. So, oh man, I'm with God? Man, I'm not gonna lack. I got everything. And then he got the Berkeley version. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall have everything. Wow, Lord. Whoa, I got everything, man. Australia, Australia will give me everything. But when he was growing up, I love that part. That was the greatest revelation that I picked up. Boom, man, my heart, my spirit just exploded. When I was maturing in God, any mature believers in the house when he was maturing in God he read the, the New King James Version King James Version he says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want because Paul remember Paul I'm everything tribes of Benjamin I'm from the church affluent I got everything but when I found Christ all these things that I consider so valuable was dung the original word, dung, D-U-N-G. Pastor Bong's translation, P-O-O. Rubbish, di ba? That's why I, 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 I took his coat on the last bit. And we know we hear this from him, from the man of God. I thank God for Brother Eddie. I thank God for his family. Oh, I'm, I thank God. It's a privilege that I'm following a movement and he is my leader. I still treasure the time that he came to Australia and he played sports and I was with him for four hours and I saw the man of God. I got a glimpse. If I want to continue God, I have to copy this guy. Paul says to Timothy, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So we hear this from him all the time, right? His principles, the world is too poor to buy my convictions. Man, you can be the best CEO in town, but if you're a rascal, you have no character. Wow, that's no good to teach our kids, right? You can have everything. No character, no longevity. They cannot entice me, the world, he says. That's why I avoid self-entitlement. Today, we just saw an example, right? People that know, don't follow the rules. There's a sign there. Stay here and the waitress will bring you to their seats. They just walk everywhere and sit. And the, and the waitress says, we're still cleaning the table. And there's a sign there. Just go there. No, I want to sit. It's vacant. The first thing that comes to mind in our, we're looking, it says, self-entitled. First world problem. Sometimes we are self-entitled. Yes? You know? That's why that's that every time in ministry when I I always put a flag on people that says, I want to serve God, but can you give me this, this and this and this? I said, Oops. Houston, we have a problem here. There's no entitlement. Right? Self seeking, avoiding the love for oneself. This is, this is not just his words. It's the scripture. I exalt the humble and resist the proud. Right? Maneuvering the environment just to be promoted. We hear this in the natural world, right? Dog eats dog. Man, I'll step on people. I'll steal as long as I get onto the top. No character. Praise God. That's why when he was maturing, he says, Wow, this is big. I got this. I want to practice this. I want to learn this. I want to pray for this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's more than enough, right? Anybody? He's more than enough. 
Amen? It's more than enough. Can I hear yes? More than enough. More than enough. More than enough. Praise God. Lord, we thank you. We bless you all. Arise. Let's pray. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promised word. We honor you. We bless you. Come on. From our lips, from our hearts, let's just thank God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Praise God. This great man of God, by the name of Apostle Paul, that you have met in Damascus Road, and you changed his life, and he never looked back, keeps reminding us in the written word, as he, as he, as he shared it to us with encouragement, with bravery and courage, to fight a good fight of faith, to finish the race, and to keep our faith well, intact. Hallelujah, Lord. We pray today, oh God, Lord, we are your army to stand even though there is persecution. All heads are bowed, eyes are closed in the house of God. Stand. We will stand in our families. We will take a stand. Come on, pray with me. Pray with me. Come on, moms and dads, families are here. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we will stand in the midst of persecution and we will never ever compromise. Hallelujah. Our love for you, the grace that we have received. Hallelujah. The grace that we have received. Lord God, we rebuke that spirit, that heart. If it appears in our lives, the spirit of pride, hallelujah, the spirit of entitlement, hallelujah, yes, God, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Alisin mo po yun, Panginoon, take it away from our lives, O Lord, hallelujah, the spirit of demanding, yes, God, Lord, may we be people who knows how to wait. And who knows how to patiently wait. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount on wings as eagles. They shall run but not grow weary. They shall walk but not faint. Lord God, yes, Lord, we will stand for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we will follow you. Come on. Hallelujah. Can we say this all together? I will follow you. I will follow you. Yes. Say that to the Lord. I will follow you. I will follow you. His promised word says, Surely grace and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Praise God.
this from your heart. Great are you, Lord. Come on. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Let's confess. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You are good. Great are you, Lord.
Lord, we thank you for this afternoon, O oh God, that we are able to gather and worship you and give you glory and give you honor, Lord. Lord, as we depart this place, I pray, O oh God, that your anointing will always be with us as you promised in Jeremiah 21, 50, O oh God. That your anointing is upon us and it shall never leave our lips. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters as they go to their temporary place, O oh God, that you will be upon them, O oh God. You will be with them, O oh Lord, and your presence will never leave them. And Lord, for this house, to Jesus' is Lord, Church Melbourne, we thank you for your faithfulness. Your enduring love, Lord, all these years. And as we move to a new direction, O oh God, you promise you will give us grace. Lord, I pray for all my brothers and sisters that we see the glory, not of the house, but we see the glory of your face. That we will be ready for our inheritance. We are not asking it too soon. We are not asking it too late because you are the God of the perfect timing, oh God. I pray that you will prepare the hearts of our, my brothers and my sister and myself, oh God. You promise us to Project Solomon in 2 Chronicles 6.40 that this house where people will bring in their prayers and you will hear them, Lord. It's not the grandeur of the house. But every time we come to the house, our prayers are heard. Our relationship are restored. Marriage are reconciled, Lord. I pray for all the leaders in this house. You give us a heart, a united heart, a passionate heart to chase the one. To never get tired of sharing the gospel to walk across the room and share that Jesus is Lord over our life, Lord. I break the spirit of complacency, oh God. Complacency is the dinner bell for his spiritual death. I pray for revival in the house. And revival will begin with us, Lord. Begin it with us. I pray for sowers, Lord, rise sowers in the house of Melbourne, Lord. Because this house will be all out for Jesus, Lord, not just Melbourne, but Jesus is Lord over Victoria, Lord. I declare in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the planters of this house, the missionary pastors who came, oh God. Lord, I pray that you bless the Jesus is Lord people, oh God, the past, the present, and the future, oh God. Lord, we thank you, and we will always honor you in our lives, in our brothers' lives. And you are not yet done with us, oh God. Lord, once again, the glory belongs to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.